Hi everyone, welcome back to the DeHart House. My name is Alicia. You can find me on Ravelry as a Lady Knits 2, and you can follow me on Instagram at Read Knit Run. You can also follow the podcast and my knitting designs on Instagram at the Art House. So welcome. Welcome back. I'm coming to you from my home in Washington State in the United States, uh, also known as the Pacific Northwest. Uh, glorious spring weather is happening outside where it's um, cloudy and cool. Um, cool enough that uh, if you're just kind of chilling out in the backyard, wearing a light sweater is all you need. Uh, and if you're going for a walk with your dog like we've been doing, um, then a t-shirt is uh, it's t-shirt weather. For getting up and moving, getting the blood pumping. It's really nice. Uh, I just spent this morning out uh, probably about maybe an hour out there this morning uh, picking weeds out of the garden. <laughs> there are lots of weeds. Things are, are growing uh, pretty quickly out there. So uh, yeah, that was a nice, enjoyable morning on this Sunday, May 2nd. Um, yeah, did I already say this is episode 92? <laughs> I don't even know. I've recorded this intro like six times now. Um, yeah, so I have some knitting to catch you up on. I have spinning to catch you up on. I've done some spinning since the last time I saw you, uh, as well as a new purchase um, stash acquisition. So uh, yeah, let me get started with the episode. Start with knitting. Uh, I... I don't know. I, I'm kind of um, losing my knitting mojo a little bit. And so I have a sock on the needles. It's a design I'm working on and I haven't done much. <laughs> so I don't know where I was last time on the last episode, um, but I, I have not put much on this, right? This is the second sock. Um, I don't know. I just really wanted to spin. So I've been spinning these last two weeks. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I did put a little bit of progress on this, uh, but not a lot, right? So this is a design I'm working on, a sock pattern. Um, I've got two, two colors of yarn here that I'm using. So the main color is uh, from yarn box and I don't think they're dying anymore or doing their subscriptions um, but this is uh, from yarn box and the colorway is eggnog winterland eggnog <laughs> uh, and then the green is um, premier yarns serenity sock in the woodsy green colorway so it's like an olive green and so uh, yeah, I'm, I did put a little bit of work into that, but not much. Um, what I really have been spending most of my time on is spinning. So I um, finished my Turkish drop spindle merino spin. Uh, this is a, a drop spindle I bought a few years ago the wool I bought at the same time a few years ago and I have finally finished it. This is the only thing I've I've made on that drop spindle. I finally have it off of there years later. So um, yeah, let me put in some footage here of me um, finishing that project, taking it off the spindle. So I finally finished the spin and so um, I just wanted to show you guys um, taking this off the Turkish spindle. I finished this last night and I resisted the urge to take it off the spindle and start something new so that I could show you. So this is a Turkish drop spindle 
from uh, Jerry Brock, uh, and I'll put a link in the description box to her um, shop. Um, I bought this a few years ago at um, DFW Fiber Fest in Dallas Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, and the wool is merino, 100% merino, which I also bought that same year at that same festival uh, from uh, Mohair and More. Uh, and they are uh, based out of Texas. And uh, yeah, so I finally finished spinning all four ounces. So this was the last ounce. You can see I was paying attention to wrapping it on here. Um, so it looks like a, what, what do they call it? Uh, God's eye. Um, but I just think that looks so cool. <laughs> so I was going for a fingering weight and we'll see after the wash and dry because the, um, the yarn can change, right? Fluff up a little bit. Um, after washing and drying, so we'll do the um, wraps per inch after that. Uh, but I just wanted to show you um, taking it off of the spindle because it's such an exciting moment to see it come off. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's do that. Okay, moment of truth. So if I zoom, if I raise this camera up a bit here okay so now you can see the whole thing so i'm going to pull out the shaft uh, through the bottom right because this is tapered so it's fatter here skinnier here and i should be able to pull it out the bottom i think i'm gonna have to pull a little bit because it's been wedged in there nicely um i gotta pull that shaft out first Oh, see, this is tough. Maybe if I push instead of pull. Ooh, that's tight, man. Ooh, there we go. Okay, so pushing. I'm pushing this. Okay, so the shaft comes out first. There we go. Look at that. <laughs> oh my goodness. And then um, this piece uh, is through the middle of this fatter piece. So I'm going to slide that out oh yeah see that slides nice and easily out and then i can pull out the last piece here which has the phases of the moon on it and there we go she's off oops off the spindle all wound up it's plied I mean, it's ready to go, but I'm going to um, give it a wash first before I knit with it. But look at that. So here's my Nitty Knotty. It is made out of PVC pipe. And uh, it's all still very much detachable. I didn't use any glue or anything. Because um, I like being able to collapse this down for storage. This is kind of an awkward shape. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I've got it all put together. And so what I'm going to do is wind this out of the ball and put it on here to make a skein. And then that way um, it'll be easier to wash. Um, I don't know how washing it in the ball would do. Right, so I'm going to wind this on here. And actually, I think I'll use my yarn it. <laughs> yarn it. Uh, and I'll put this inside of here so it doesn't um, roll around the floor and pick up a whole bunch of dog hair and get caught around the chair legs and stuff. So I've got it in there, coming through here so the ball will just roll around inside of the yarn it. So I'll set that on my desk. And then um, I 
get this started on here. So I actually tie just um, not a not a knot. <laughs> tie around here and then I hold it with my thumb. And this is usually when the PVC pipe tends to fall apart a little bit. But I'll do a few rounds like this just to get it started. I can feel it coming apart a little bit. My nitty knotty. Oh wow. That's a big ol' Okay, there we go. But uh, yeah, okay, so now I can maybe get a groove going here. Yeah. All right, so it's all wound up on the Nitty Knotty, and I've put some figure eight ties on here. So there's one on each um, section. The section has two from the two ends of the, of the yarn tied on. Uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna take this off the Nitty Knotty. So I just pull this apart. And I have my skein, right? And so what I'm going to do is um, give this a wash. So I'll soak it in some water and hang it up to dry. And then um, we'll see what it looks like in the end. I'll do a yardage count and then we'll see what um, I decide to make out of it. But it's nice, um, really soft merino. So um, certainly not enough for a sweater or anything, but maybe a nice uh, cowl or shawl, hat, I don't know. But next step is to give it a wash, hang it up to dry, and then I can bring it back to show you. Yeah, so really exciting stuff. So I have... <laughs> all four ounces. So I purchased four ounces of this uh, merino wool and I have purchased it from, like I said, uh, mohair and more and it's glorious. <laughs> Wonderful stuff from mohair and more. Um, yep. So I, what I did is I split up the fiber into um, one ounce bundles. So I had four one ounce bundles. And um, that way I wouldn't overload the spindle uh, too much. And so I uh, purchased the Turkish drop spindle from Jerry Brock and she was um, running a informational session uh, at DFW Fiber Fest they were doing that year um, what were they calling it? They were running little info sessions in the um, common area where there was a bunch of seating. They had the vendors around the uh, edges and then in the middle were a bunch of tables and chairs and they had set up a little stage so that vendors could come in and present um, about um, how to use their products or different techniques of, of knitting and spinning and crocheting and things. Um, so Jerry Brock was uh, doing uh, tutorials in there about um, chain plying on a Turkish drop spindle. So <laughs> I was doing that. So I was learning how to do it at the Fiber Fest. 
uh, and then I just continue to do it with all the rest of the fiber. So this is all chain plied, which means it's a three ply yarn. I was going for a fingering weight and I need to check that on the, um, my wraps per inch tool. We'll do that here in a second. Um, yeah, cause I should put that info on my little tags here. Uh, what weight yard this is wraps per inch um, so total if I add up all four of these skeins I have a total of 333 yards just pretty good so I think that's not quite a fingering weight I think fingering weight would be more like 400 yards um, so I'm about 70 yards short of that so I don't know let's um let's see on the wraps per inch tool okay so I undid one of the skeins but I didn't want to quite completely undo it and wind it into a ball so I've just overlaid the strands here in my wraps per inch tool and I think that's probably good so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So that's like a DK. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Do I have like a DK weight here? And then there are also these um, thicknesses etched into this. So if I overlay one of these strands on the DK. Yeah. That's pretty good. So DK, DK slash sport weight. I mean, those are so close anyway. Yeah, I might say sport weight by this, especially if I put a little stretch on it anyway. <laughs> yeah, um, this is a pretty fancy Cool, I love this. Uh, yeah, so it's like a sport weight, DK weight. I'm going to say s sport, but uh, yeah, not bad. So I was hoping for a fingering weight, but it uh, didn't quite make the mark, which is okay. I mean, it is a three ply. Um, yarn in the end so I think if I would have done a two ply um, spinning at that thickness it would be more of a fingering weight which is good to know um, but yeah the yarn is very soft um, and so I'm thinking that I'm gonna make something um, next to skin um, like a scarf or something uh, just because it is so soft and I only have 300 yards of it um, So it's not like I can make a, a large item out of what I have, but uh, it was a very nice um, First spin on that Turkish drop spindle, which is not my first time using a drop spindle um, But it was my first time using a Turkish drop spindle um, doing chain ply um, even plying on a, sp I mean, it was a um, really good experience. It taught me a lot about drafting, um, and making sure you have enough twist in the fiber. Um, yeah, yeah, great project. So it's finally finished uh, off of the spindle. So of course I was completely motivated to start a new spinning project, which is what I did. <laughs> so. Um, I pulled out some fiber that I bought in 2019, um, shortly after moving here to Washington. So, it's all getting mixed together. So I have this uh, green uh, fiber, and I've done the same thing. I've split up the four ounces into uh, one ounce sections. Um, so this is uh, green. It's just kind of splotched on here, light and dark, light and dark, uh, you know, with a white in there. And so I've... <laughs> 
So I've gone ahead and started it. It's on the spindle. <clears throat> so I did already start spinning. <laughs> and yep, I'm already starting to fill up my uh, Turkish drop spindle. And I'm having a really great time with this. So um, I am not doing the chain ply this time. So I am winding the singles on here and then I will do a two ply. So I'm spinning this the same as previously, so the same thickness and whatnot, uh, but instead of a three ply, it'll become a two ply. And so maybe I will achieve that fingering weight yarn. That's my hope. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so I'm working on that. And this is, uh, this is Merino wool. And I bought this from um, Snow Kissed Farm Girl on Etsy. And I'll put a link to the shop down in the description box. Um, and I'm, like I said, I bought this back in fall of 2019. I bought this green as well as a, um, like a, a dark purple bluish color. And um, yeah, so it is, um, because I'm spinning it so, th so thin, um, the green is really blending out and you're not seeing those big, um, you know, dark green and then the light bit. It's all kind of blending together uh, because I am spinning it so thin. So I was hoping for a bit more variegation in here. I don't think I'm gonna get that. I think I would have needed to spin this thicker to keep those um, clusters of color, if that makes sense, um, more intact. But because I'm um, spreading the fiber out so thinly, it's blending together more. But that's okay. Um, yeah, so I'm just enjoying the process. I have no idea what I'm going to make out of that yarn. Um, but, uh, I don't know. We'll see when we get there. <laughs> and hopefully it won't be another, you know, two or three years later. Hopefully I'll finish it this year. Uh, yeah. So that's that. And then, because I was so excited about finishing um, that spin, I decided um, that I should bring more fiber into my uh, stash. <laughs> so whatever so uh this is from uh wound up fiber arts okay <laughs> this is from wound up fiber arts and i've had my eye on her shop for a while now because her colors are just amazing and she has um Superwash Merino Nylon Blend in the fiber. Hi, Marjorie. What's going on? Do you need ass assistance? Hang on. My co-host needs me. I don't know what she was barking at. <laughs> there was no one there by the time I got out there. Uh, probably someone walking by with their dog. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, and for those of you who don't know, uh, Marjorie is our black Labrador. So she opened the door and uh, was trying to get my attention to go out there and see whatever it was she was seeing, which I love when she does that. <laughs> anyway, um, Wound Up Fiber Arts, um, based out of Michigan. And um, yeah, I've been eyeing her stuff on Instagram. Um, she posts weekly updates with fiber. Um, including Superwash Merino Nylon Blend, um, which I don't have in my stash, uh, but I would like to try um, spinning yarn for socks. 100% uh, Merino, not something I'm willing to wear as socks because uh, I need the nylon content um, for durability. So I got... <laughs> Uh, one of the Superwash Merino Nylon Blend, and um, I saved opening it for the podcast because, oh, 
it's just so exciting. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. It is even better in person. What? Holy cow. Okay, so this is um Moonwalk. This is Superwash Merino. I thought I had nylon in it. This is 19.5 micron. Colorway is Moonwalk. Um, oh my gosh, look at these colors. Look at that. <gasps> yeah, so I bought this with um, Michael in mind, my husband. Um, he loves um, space. He listens to a lot of um, space talks um, about the universe and physics and as a big fan of Neil deGrasse Tyson and anyway it's called Moonwalk and so it made me think of him um, in space and the colors are these nice uh, blues and, and dark dark colors I think this is gonna make an awesome pair of socks for him what else do we have in here with my receipt yeah, it just says Superwash Merino. I thought I got the one with nylon in it. I guess not. Well, I don't know then. <laughs> Gosh darn it. Okay. Nope, nothing on the back. Okay, well, maybe they won't be socks then. <laughs> I'm going to leave this in the bag. Oh, it's so pretty. So pretty. I'm very excited about that. So yeah, I don't know if I'll do um, drop spindle or spinning wheel, but after finishing that gray, I just felt like I wanted color. And uh, yeah, this called to me. So that is now a part of my stash. Uh, but I couldn't wait for that to come in the mail. I had to immediately start spinning something I already had, which I want to do anyway, right? I want to, the whole point for me of having the stash is for me to use it while it looks beautiful on the shelf as decoration. That's not the, my main purpose for it. I would like to actually use it. So <laughs> spinning something I already have just makes sense. So, yeah, that's what's um, going on in the craft room. Um, I have not uh, pulled out my sewing machine. Um, working from home, you know, my office has taken over um, this area. So I work out of this room um, teaching remotely. And... Um, so I just haven't really had time or space to pull out my sewing machine. Um, which I really want to do. <laughs> uh, I do miss sewing. It is a very fun craft. Um, but I am looking forward to this summer. Um, I am not going to be teaching over the summer. So I will be able to um, take a break, give my brain a rest um and spend more time um out in the garden out camping on the crafts with my family um and just be present in the moment which will be really um really nice to do for a month or two um but yeah that's what i've been working on um and it's taken me two weeks to get there <laughs> So I think we're going to be on a every two week schedule here on the podcast because uh, I just don't really get enough done in one week to warrant an episode. Um, so on that note, let me take you out in the garden. It is now the month of May. Uh, it's May 2nd. And like I said, things have been growing really well out in the garden with uh, we had a huge influx of sunlight and warm weather, uh, which made some things really germinate that like the warm weather. Uh, and then it cooled off with the um, with some rain and some cloudy weather, and so then everything really just took off. Like it wasn't cooking in the sun; it was a great temperature. And so, let me take you out in the garden and show you um, 
how things are coming along out there. Okay, so we're outside my back door here. <laughs> uh, it's a glorious day. And uh, I'm gonna show you, I have some um, seedlings here just outside the back door that are um, still growing, but also I'm hardening them off, getting them used to the temperatures outside and the sunlight. So I can show you those. Here we go. So we've got tomatoes and peppers, um, and over here more peppers. Um, I think we've got a kale plant there maybe. Uh, I kind of lost track of my labels, so I'm not entirely sure of, of all what I have here. But uh, yeah, peppers and tomatoes are the main thing. And then uh, <laughs> we've got the garlic patch. I came out here and did some weeding, but the garlic is, what is that, like two feet tall now? I planted this back in October, late October, when we bought the house. I did put in some tomato plants next to them. These three were growing out of those solo cups, <laughs> so they are in the ground and doing very well. Uh, I'm very excited about those. Those are cherry tomatoes. Indeterminate, so I'll get some stakes in here and we'll get them to grow really, really tall. See all the weeds? Look at this, this is all weeds. <laughs> Crazy. It's my carrot patch. I don't know if you can see. I got rows of carrots. Different phases. So the older ones are back here, younger ones up front. Hard to see with all the weeds around it. They're coming in. <laughs> There's Marjorie. Now back here are the potatoes. I think last time I brought you guys out here, they weren't up through the ground yet. And again, there's a bunch of weeds in there, which makes them a little hard to see, but potato, 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 potato. I mean, look at this, this thing is, a good size. Look at that. It's awesome. Really strong. I did not have potatoes in this early last year. This is what I needed to do. So I'm very excited about potatoes. These are some bushes that were here when we moved in. I think we're going to get some kind of berry out of this. See the flowers? This is some kind of berry plant. Oh, I love berries. Yep, excited about that. We'll go to the other side of the yard. Strawberries are still here. They're not growing a lot, but I know they will. They'll spread out. And we've got the broccoli, which is actually growing, and cabbage. I need to work on my slug control, because the slugs are kind of coming in. I'll show you. They're coming in and eating the slugs. So I need to do something about that. They have just destroyed this radish plant. Um, yep. I did harvest my big radish that was right here. Some had come along starting to eat it. So I just took it and ate the rest. <laughs> uh, slug came along and destroyed this cabbage. This came in the center here. I even saw him there in the center, pulled him out, but I think he may have, um, I don't know, stunted the growth on this. I don't know if I'll get a cabbage. Kale is doing well. This is one of those things that I thought wasn't gonna make it, uh, but the kale is doing well. 
And here are some Brussels sprouts I need to put in. Lettuce. Onions. Onions are doing well. Look at this. Look at this right here. These are nice and thick. Bunching onions. And then Walla Walla here in the middle. And over here is red burgundy. I didn't realize red burgundy is actually a short day onion. I'm above the 45th parallel, so I'm not sure how these are going to do. <laughs> but we'll find out. So, yep, there's the onions. It's looking pretty good. Compost pile is pretty full. Like I said, I did some weeding this morning. Hey, check out this temperature. I love this thermometer on the compost. So we're in the 80s. It's not quite a hot pile, but uh, that's okay. She's only two feet tall. <coughs> two feet, two and a half, something like that. The peas have taken off. Look at this. I, I think I planted them maybe a little too thick here. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a bushy mess. But yeah, there's peas. There's another lettuce. Um, and then here I have a, a different variety of peas. Uh, I planted the seeds just straight out here. Um, these were transplanted. I started those inside. And then later I put seeds in the ground here. Um, spinach. Spinach is doing okay. I thought it'd be so much bigger by now. I thought I would be eating spinach leaves by now, but look at how tiny these are. Zucchini, zucchini, um, arugula, also not very big. Winter squash, um, yeah. I thought these things would be bigger, but uh, they're not. <laughs> My glasses are still transitioning from being outside. <laughs> Even though it's not super sunny, it is enough sunlight still to trigger that. Um, but yeah, so uh, things I would say are growing really well in the garden. Garlic, potatoes, and tomatoes. Yeah. <laughs> um, things that I hope to... Um, well, the peas are also growing really well, to be honest. Um, and I don't have a lot of experience, I don't have a lot of experience, period, with gardening, but <laughs> um, I did not grow peas last year. Last year was my first um, garden and uh, my trial garden in, in the home we were renting. Um, and I didn't have peas there, so I'm not entirely sure <laughs> when they'll get the flowers and things like that. But uh, yeah, the peas are also growing really well. Um, things I wish were growing a little bit better, uh, zucchini. <laughs> um, the, the zucchini, I think maybe I'll put a couple more seeds in, get some other plants going. Um, maybe they'll be a bit stronger, more robust, because uh, I, I love that zucchini, really good stuff. Um, yeah, but I'm, I'm excited. Uh, at some point I'll be putting in some uh, warmer weather crops like corn. I'm going to plant corn this year. Um, so that's not in the ground yet. I need to do um, check on the weather, make sure we don't have any um, frost or snow in the forecast. And maybe I could get that in the ground soon. Um, yeah, it would be really cool to eat an ear of corn freshly picked in my backyard. That would be an awesome thing to do this summer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, so yeah, lots of spinning has happened this week, uh, this past couple weeks, and I think more spinning will happen in the next couple of weeks. Hopefully I'll get my knitting mojo back. Maybe I'll cast on my fresh off the spindle yarn. Maybe that'll help uh, inspire me. But, uh, 
yeah, that's what's what's going on here in the DeHart house. So um, I hope that you folks are uh, staying safe, that uh, that you're well, and that uh, you're finding time for your hobbies and crafts as well, uh, for family and friends, and for getting outside. I know the sunlight and the fresh air make such a, a positive difference in my day. So I hope you're able to find time to do that as well. Um, yeah. <laughs> so until, uh, until next time, uh, take care, be well, uh, and enjoy your craft and hobbies, whatever they may be. I will see you in a couple of weeks. Bye.